in the headlines. President Sailor Zodek calls for the need to encourage women to get their agenda included in the forthcoming national dialogue. And South Africa is in a less positive mood ahead of polls on May 29th as opposed to ecstatic mood three decades back. Welcome to EBC World, the voice of Pan-Africanism with the news for the hour. I am Magdala Isiyum and now moving on. President Sailor Zaude calls for the need to encourage women to get their agenda included in the forthcoming National Dialogue. A national conciliative forum aims at strengthening women's participation in the forthcoming National Dialogue. Addressing the forum, President Zaude pointed out the National Dialogue is inclusive and has proved to be fruitful in many countries. Saying the country has experienced a dispute that led to conflicts, the president stressed the role of national dialogue in addressing these differences and putting Ethiopia in a solid foundation. Women are victims of conflict. Therefore, they have to be active participants in the national dialogue, which is believed to accommodate ideas crucial to addressing this challenge. Women have contributed their ideas and placed their agendas at the national dialogue process, the president added. The African Leadership Excellence Academy, AFLEX, and the China's Academy of International Business Official, AIBO, signed an MOU today. AFLEX President Zadig Abraha and AIBO President San Zhonghui signed the agreement, ENA reported. The agreement, which is expected to quickly take effect after the signing paves the way for increased collaboration and leadership development and enables AFLEX to become China's training base for Africa. AIBO, also known as the Training Center of the Minister of Commerce, MOFCOM um, of China, holds a unique position as the only educational institution directly affiliated with China's MOFCOM. AIBO plays a vital role in shaping international trade and economic cooperation, Initiative Zadig noted. AIBO president stressed the MOU's potential to strengthen strategic academy and economic partnership between Ethiopia and China. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs disclosed that Ethiopia is working hard to become members of BRICS Development Bank. In the media briefing regarding the country's diplomatic activities over the week, spokesperson of the Ministry, Nabu Tadla, indicated that Ethiopia's delegation, led by State Minister of Foreign Affairs Ambassador Misgano Aragga, participated in the conciliation of BRICS member countries held in Moscow, Russia. Nabiyu explained that Ethiopia has joined BRICS to protect its national interest and navigate its alternative benefits and the financial and related matters. As part of Ethiopia's endeavor to maximize its gain from the international organizations like BRICS, he revealed the ongoing efforts being made to become a member of the new development bank. Transportation within Italy, once you get to Italy. Loved the grilled cheese, it was delicious.
welcome back and now to stories from across the continent. Some years ago, the UBC family in South Africa chose an unusual name for their son. That's because he was born on a day of South Africa's first multiracial election. Three decades later, the country is in a less positive mood ahead of polls on May 29th, according to the news report by the TRT World. It's been over three decades since South Africa first marked their first post-independence year. Although the election three decades ago that brought Nelson Mandela to power was filled an atmosphere of joy and hope, TRT's new story says South Africa this time are not feeling very optimistic Mandela's dream of a free and prosperous South Africa. The nation has been shattered by issues of poverty, inequality, corruption and criminality. South Africa's unemployment rate has more than 30% is the highest in the world. Worse still, according to the government's quarterly labor force survey, nearly 60% of the country's young people are unemployed. As far as elections are concerned, many South African youths say they only hope for a future where their community succeeds in terms of surviving, delivery and running water and nothing more. Furthermore, they laminated that they are tired of politics and politicians who promise a great deal but don't actually deliver. This, the majority of yours constituting the new generation, has gone to extent of pushing them to abstain from voting. Thank you for tuning in to ABC World. Before I go, recap of the top stories once again. President Salor Zode calls for the need to encourage women to get their agenda included in the forthcoming National Dialogue. And South Africa's in a less positive mood ahead of polls on May 29th as opposed to ecstatic mood three decades back. That's all we had for today's update. It was me, Matt Belay, with the news for the hour. Goodbye.